The bullet I'm using in today's pack t test was recommended by one of you. Hey, thank you for this recommendation. And the bullet that I am talking about is the Lehigh Controlled Chaos. This is a 62 grain uh, bullet for a 223 or 556 specific factory ammo is made by Lehigh Defense. It is rated at 2,800 feet per second out of a 16 inch barrel. I'll be shooting my IWI Tavor rifle today, which has an 18 inch barrel. We'll see if that makes any difference and if indeed we do achieve about 2,800 or so feet per second out of the muzzle. Now, Pack T is precision, accuracy, consistency, and terminal performance. Precision is measured on a bullseye target. We're measuring extreme spread, and, and whenever I uh, deal with rifles, I shoot those at 100 yards and uh, measure that also in MOA. Accuracy is the bullseye score on that target, and consistency comes from my lab radar chronograph. I'm looking at the consistency of these rounds, in other words, the standard deviation of the muzzle velocities. Terminal performance, kind of the uh, height or the piece de resistance of our Pack T tests, that is one round of this fired from seven yards into ballistic gelatin. I use 20% NATO blocks, 16 inches by six by six. We're going to get all that on video. I'm ready to head out to the range, start shooting, get some trigger time, see how this goes. Don't forget to stick around after all the range time because we're going to analyze all these results and see how the controlled chaos bullet did uh, compared to some of our other rounds that we've been shooting over the years. Five rounds with this Lehigh 62 grain controlled chaos. This is an interesting bullet. have never shot it before, so this is a first. Conditions are just about ideal today. Very little wind. They're moving along pretty nicely. This is supposed to be a pretty fast bullet, 2,954 feet per second. Well, that one is really slow, 2,907. And we are out. Back on safe and we're clear. You know, I had a couple of other shots in this gel block, and I did not want to disturb those bullets. So I purposely uh, pulled my shot into, I was trying to place that shot into the upper right quadrant of this gel block. And I pretty much did that. Eh, it may be a little bit lower than I wanted, absolutely, uh, for a perfect shot. But this is it here. And, you know, it, it did, as it's advertised, those pedals are just busting out, flashing out, whatever you want to say. They're all over the place in here. And this is the temporary wound channel or the permanent wound channel. In this case, very small, lots of action over here. Uh, and then it made it into the second block. It did not exit that second block. I'm at the tear end of that second block, that backer block, as I call it, quite a bit older, uh, lots of remelts. That's why it's discolored like that. But, um, I don't know, I can't see any remnants of it, but let's go ahead and get a field measurement so we have a feel for where that um, bullet or how deep that bullet penetrated. We can see this is a full 16 inch gel block and I can see 
penetration all the way to there. So we have, according to this, about a 19 and 3 quarters, maybe a 20 inch penetration. I'd like to see if we have any fragments in the second gel block, um, but I don't see any right now. It may have been a complete disintegration inside the first gel block. Had to been something in here though to cause this. Let's see if we can find it when we get back in. Now that's impressive. I am impressed by this little thing. You know, I've shot some Lehigh bullets in the past, in particular the Extreme Penetrator. Really wasn't too impressed with that as far as I was concerned. Far too much. It over-penetrated. Uh, so it certainly is an Extreme Penetrator. Uh, so I didn't know what to think of these um, controlled chaos bullets. But boy, these are pretty darn impressive. You know, the kind of the leader, I'll say, or the best of the 5.56 bullets that I've tested so far is another 62 grain bullet and that is the Barnes triple uh, tipped triple shock bullet TTSX. That bullet did a fantastic job and so I'm going to be making some comparisons uh, with that bullet and the Lehigh Controlled Chaos. The link for that P, uh, pack t test is uh, shown in the description below so you can catch up on all those details. But let's start by taking a look at the pack part, precision, accuracy, consistency. This is the target and uh, once again this rifle was not zeroed for that particular ammo, didn't do too bad, but uh, we ended up with a score of 34 points zero in the X. That's the accuracy part. Precision, we've got a 1.424 inch extreme spread, uh, which equates to 1.36 MOA. This was shot at that 100 yards. Muzzle velocity, now this is really interesting. The muzzle velocity was 2,931 feet per second out of that 18 inch barrel. And this is rated at 2,800 feet per second for a 16-inch barrel. I don't think that those two extra inches uh, can account for uh, over 100 feet per second gain. But uh, things worked out really well. The consistency of these bullets, we had 18.1 feet per second of standard deviation. So that's not too bad. You know, sometimes our factory ammo will go way up there into the 30s and stuff. Uh, so this is not bad, not bad at all for factory ammo uh, and certainly didn't group very badly. Kind of meets what we call the, the designated marksmanship rule of 1.5 MOA or less. But now the real exciting part, the thing I really, really like to see with all these different tests is I like to take a look at the terminal performance testing in that clear ballistic ballistic gelatin. So let's take a look at those results. We had a total penetration of 20 inches and you know I, I, I mentioned out at the range that I want to take a look at that second gel block. We, we penetrated all the way through the first gel block, 16 inches there, and then we got four inches more out of the second gel block. But when I closely examined that second gel block here uh, back at the house, I noticed that the bullet squirted out the side. Didn't really travel absolutely straight then, but when it hit that second gel block, it veered off to the right and it exited the gel block, which is kind of unfortunate. I don't know how much of the bullet uh, was in that second gel block, but there was obviously something there because otherwise we wouldn't have seen that wound channel in the second gel block. The fragments that I did collect from the first gel block, we only had like 12 grains remaining, so 20% weight retention. Uh, the largest chunk was then measured uh, for the retained length of 0 0.171 uh, inch. Um, we had 97% expansion. In other words, the biggest chunk that I had wasn't even as large as the original bullet. So the score for this bullet suffered terribly. We only got 125 points out of a possible 500 points. That compared to the other bullets, uh, the, a lot of the other bullets that I've been shooting, 
that's terrible. I mean, it really is very, very bad. So I'm really getting concerned that the scoring mechanism, which is based on a modified FBI protocol, uh, that it's, it's, it might be outdated because that protocol rewards bullets for mushrooming very nicely, retaining all of their weight, and penetrating into about 11 inches or so of that, of that gel block. And this is a 20% gel block, so the modification has been made to accommodate the denser uh, gel block compared to what we call the FBI block, which is a 10% ordinance. This is a 20% ordinance. Okay, so um, my concern is that this bullet actually did do quite well. I mean, it is right up there with the Barnes 62 grain tipped triple shock, but it really acted quite differently. The Barnes bullet, 100% copper, save for that polymer tip, drove into that gel block. Now I'm using a little bit older gel block when I did that test. It had a couple of remelts on it, but we can see a very large temporary wound channel. This is the largest temporary wound channel that was recorded by my camera. Understand that it might have been larger at another frame. It just didn't get that. And the Barnes had a 1.39 MOA group, five shot group, also shot with that same rifle at 100 yards. The Lehigh was 1.36 MOA, you might recall. The Barnes bullet shot a little bit higher score, 40, po uh, 40 points, zero in the X. Uh, and in the overall terminal performance scoring, it more than doubled the score of the Lehigh Controlled Chaos with a score of 290 points, which also, by the way, is not fantastic. And the reason why the Barnes lost a lot of points is because it officially overpenetrated. It didn't stay in that sweet spot of about 11 inches uh, or so. So we really need to take that final score with a grain of salt, especially when we look at or are dealing with rifle bullets. And in fact, um, I think one of the most important qualitative tests we can give this bullet is looking at that temporary cavitation channel or the temporary wound channel. Just take a look at this. This is the largest wound channel captured on my camera for the 62 grain Lehigh Control Chaos. This is phenomenal. Look at that. I mean, it more or less is filling the entire first 16 inch gel block and still had plenty of energy into that second gel block. We can see a relatively small, I guess, but still a nice wound channel appearing in that second gel block in the first couple of inches. And also understand that this bullet went through a soft barrier and still it, it expanded exactly as it's supposed to. Uh, it fragmented. This is a fragmenting bullet. Those petals just came right off and, uh, and, and that's how it, uh, it provides its energy to that target. Now I have no experience with this bullet other than what I just shot today. And I'm interested if some of you have maybe been hunting with this bullet, maybe on hogs, maybe on something else, um, maybe deer, I don't know. Um, but if you have some experience with controlled chaos bullets, um, go ahead and post that information in the comments section below. I'd really like to hear what you're seeing uh, in the field. This is one of those bullets that definitely gets a thumbs up from me. It is right up there with the Barnes tipped triple shock bullet. Yes, it's a different type of bullet, how it acts terminally, but I think it's going to be a very effective bullet. Well, that wraps it up for us. Thanks again for watching. We've got some more stuff coming up, and if you'd like to see us test a certain bullet or a certain brand of ammunition, 9mm, 45 ACP, 5.56, lots of different things we could test for you. Go ahead and give us those ideas. We'll see if we can work them in. Thanks a bunch for watching.